And good afternoon and welcome to Diane Wright's or good morning or good evening, depending on where you are in the world, I guess. How is everyone doing today? Afternoon? <laughs> it's afternoon for me anyway. Music still on? Yeah. Uh, should I turn it down a bit? It's a bit loud probably, eh? I usually leave my music on. So, there we go. That better? Yeah. So, nano prep. That's what we're talking about today. Hello, Cypher Love. Welcome. I don't know if I have seen you in the chat before, so good to see you. Welcome. And of course, all the usual suspects are here, which is awesome. Hello, Secondhand Samurai, Gift of Gabby, Dazzlecat, Siobhan the Writer. I see Daz has been playing with my new emotes, which are finally, uh, you know, approved and ready to go. So you may have noticed a certain theme. The flag looks better with shades. I agree. That's awesome. Oh, Barbarossa's here. Hello, Kit is here. Dillian is here. Excellent. With his burbs. Right, right, right. Yes. That is what we're going to be doing today. But we're also going to be talking about nano prep. And, um, all right. So I guess I'll do the announcement here and I'll also do it at the end of the stream because we tend to get people coming in and out over the course of three hours, which makes sense. Okay. So a couple of us, uh, Anvilite streamer core writers have been talking about how we've got a special event plan for NaNoWriMo and it's not something that all of the Anvilite writers are doing but a lot of us are and uh, I'm very excited about it and uh, we're going to actually announce what it is and explain the details on Friday. Um, right after the uh, World Anvil community or tutorial stream I think it is on Friday. Oh thank you for the posture check. Yeah, um, right after the... Oh, that worked. <laughs> Can't quite reach that high. Okay, sorry about my camera here. That did not work. Ah. Uh, stupid thing. Yeah, okay. So, after the um, tutorial stream on Friday from World Anvil, uh, we're going to do a special one hour stream right before Ask an Old GM. So that'll be noon Pacific, whatever time that is in your time zone. Uh, it uh, should be on the calendar if it isn't already at the ASC site. So I will, um, I'll just put that in there, right? Um, the main calendar is on the main page. There's also, if you scroll down on the left hand side, there's a heading called events. You click on that, it'll take you to a couple of uh, different uh, access to event calendars. And one of them is NaNoWriMo and it should be on that calendar as well. Right. And we will announce the, uh, it's, well, it's sort of a competition. It's not really a competition. So you don't have to be all like, Oh, I don't like competitions. They're intimidating. They scare me. It's all for fun. Right. So, and, uh, this is like brand new that, uh, this slot opened up and it was suggested that we do this. So I hope to have some guest streamers from the Anvilite streamer core on there. We'll see if that works out. So, and I'll announce that again at the end of the stream, but that's the, that's the plan. So don't miss that stream guys. It's going to be cool. Yeah, it's good. I'm, I'm very excited. It's going to be fun. Barbarossa says, I'm so gosh darn prepped for this nano prep that I'm actually lying and not prepped at all. It's scary. <laughs> Siobhan whistles innocently. Yes, Siobhan is one of our, uh, one of the streamers who is joining us for this and the organizing of this. Anyone can participate, by the way. If you are writing for National Novel Writing Month or even you just want to work on your writing for the month, you can participate. Right? So, yes, it will be cool. Delian says, oh no, more things to do on top of the, of the two her thousand things to do. Yes. Yes. I, I have a problem with that. And then to be fair, sometimes I go ah, and I just blow up and then whatever 
it is that is least convenient gets kicked from the calendar. <laughs> I've got to be honest here. <laughs> yeah, sort of like a three-legged race. But I have help with this. So it's okay, because when you have help, things are actually easier. So it's good. Friday is an ASC takeover on the World Anvil stream. See, I wasn't sure if I was allowed to say anything about this uh, secondhand. We will be introducing ASC events and Nano, and Shy thought it would be great to go into a great Nano stream. Can't wait for your game to be explained. Awesome. I'm very excited about it too. I can't, I can't wait. And I'm definitely not going to miss the Royal Anvil stream. I know that, uh, I believe that uh, Shy and Hefe are probably going to be appearing on it because Shy is our organizer, right? And uh, uh, Hefe is our events coordinator. So it will be awesome. <laughs> Barbarossa has praise for Siobhan. Darth Nicholas is here! Darth Nicholas is here! Hello! Welcome! Okay, so with that announcement, uh, and again, like I said, I'll mention it at the end of the stream again. Um, let's talk Nano Prep. Nano Prep Week, uh, just a second here, I'll show you the ASC calendar on this because Hefe is a genius and has laid this out in a way that you can clearly see what is going on. So, okay, main screen. Here we go. We're on the ASC site. So like I was talking about, this is the main page. You go down here, you go to events. Then here's NaNoWriMo. So he's got the calendar laid out in the month format, but as you can see, this week is the first week of Preptober and Preptember. It used to be Preptember, now it's pre Preptober, now it's Preptember and Preptober, right? And uh, we're talking about developing story ideas today. Also, don't miss the other uh, nano-related streams. Hefe's already been on, starting his writing Wednesdays. He's going to be doing that um, every Wednesday up till NaNoWriMo, I understand, and probably through it. And Siobhan will be on later tonight or tomorrow morning. Well, tomorrow morning regardless. Tomorrow morning if you're in the Pacific time zone. Tomorrow afternoon if you're in Europe, and tomorrow evening, I believe, if you're in, uh, you know, points further east. So, right, um, yes, but story ideas, that's what we're talking about today. So, the question is, right, where do story ideas come from? Um, how do you develop a story idea into a full-fledged story? Right? And how do you know if your story idea is a good one? I know that everyone is kind of thinking about that. What? I don't have a hail hydrate? Oh, I'm sorry. Hail hydrate. <laughs> Danny is here. Sarah is here. Hello. Welcome. All right. So, uh, actually, since Darth and Danny are both here, and I don't know if they saw the announcement at the beginning, we're going to announce our event on Friday at 12, uh, 12 o'clock noon Pacific time after the World Anvil stream. Just, uh, just FYI. And if any of you guys who are, you know, part of the event, and they are, they're, uh, they're joining me, right, uh, want to be uh, guests on my stream that day, then I'd love to have you. And, you know, so let me know. Right. It's only going to be for an hour. It's going to run before Aaron's regular Ask an Old GM stream, which starts at 1 p.m. Pacific. So, yes. Yes, the event for Nano. We are making the announcement because uh, World Anvil is featuring the ASC and our Nano activities on their stream that day. So it made sense to do the announcement right after. I just found out this morning. So yes, Siobhan's in, great, okay, cool. Yeah, I'll, I'll take any, all, or, you know, whoever, right? Um, we'll make a screen, we'll set up Google Meet, it'll be great. Danny's in, excellent, cool. See, you're gonna get to see all these great people all at once, so you can't miss it. All right, back to story ideas. So, um, that's the first question writers often get asked is where do your ideas come from? And most of the ones who are prolific 
never know how to answer that because stuff generally pours out of their subconscious and they have to write it. But there are actually places that it comes from and any of them are valid. <laughs> Barbarossa says, store idea, 400 men go in, 800 come out. Ideas, shrug. Siobhan doesn't know. She comes up with ideas and she writes them. Okay, so... Um... Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to lay out a couple of uh, sources of of things where I know case examples where I know writers have gotten ideas. Sometimes it comes from a scene, right? You just get this idea in your head and and you're like, what's it, what if this happened? And actually, that's that's always the question. A story always starts with what if, right? What if this played out how would things build up to that point what would happen afterwards like but everything starts with the what if so um the most obvious example i can think of right for those of you who are stephen king fans which you know i'm a, I'm a lot behind i haven't but i used to read him a lot he was a big influence on my writing and me wanting to be a writer because I started reading him when I was really young. I read The Dead Zone. I think that was the first book by him I read. And I was 10 when I read that. And then the door opened, right? But, um, okay, so for those of you who have read The Stand, right? Or even if you've seen that old miniseries that was on TV at one point. You'll remember there is a scene where Larry Underwood has to escape New York by going out of the New York tunnel. And it is a creepy, horrific, disturbing scene. It's all dark. There's dead bodies in there. There might be somebody pursuing him. He has reason to believe, like, there were people hung in Times Square, so he has reason to believe there might be dangerous people who are hunting people in there, right? Um, <clears throat> you know, it's a, it's a, it's a very... One of his better written, and he writes great horror scenes, but that's one of his better written suspense horror scenes. Okay. Um, so years later, I was reading a book called Earth Abides by, I want to say George Stewart. I hope I'm right with that. Stewart's the last name. I remember that in particular. And this is considered a classic of science fiction and in particular of post-apocalyptic fiction. I know that Stephen King read it because he referenced it in his book Dance Macabre, right? So, which is his book about horror and writing horror in particular, right? Which everyone who is a writer, I mean, everyone recommends on writing, but you should read this one too, especially if you write any speculative fiction, okay? So, I read a scene in Earth Abides, and I went, that's where he got the idea. In the scene, um, it's a similar sort of thing, right? There was a plague, wipes out most of the population. A bunch of the survivors kind of wander America looking to connect with other people. Like if, if you, you know for a fact, this is part of the reason why I say um, good writers uh, steal right? Great writers steal it and file off the serial numbers. George R. Stewart, thank you very much, Aaron, for providing the link. Excellent. Yeah, that's in the chat there, right? Okay, so it's, it's a very similar plot to like the first part of the stand. You can tell clearly this is where he came up with it, but there's a scene where the protagonist is he's passing by New York, right? He's not in New York. And he looks into the New York tunnel and he's like, I should go check it out. And then he gets like to the mouth of the tunnel and he goes, oh, but you know, that's probably crammed. I mean, I'm seeing all these traffic jams. It's probably full of dead bodies. There's, you know, it's going to be dark because, you know, all the lights have gone out. I don't know who's going to be in there. It's going to take hours to get through it. Yeah, I don't think I'm going in there. And to me, I knew immediately that Stephen King had the idea, because I know how a writer's brain works, where he was reading that scene and he went, but what if he did? So there's one way that story ideas get started. I'm going to check out the chat while I've been chatting here, just in case I've missed anything important. Natalia's here. Welcome. 
Barbarossa says, story idea, a necromancer whose dream is to raise a family. I like that idea very much. I think that would, that's probably a better short story than a novel. And I would definitely read that. I would read the shit out of that. And I even know places where that could be published and it would probably go over really well. Yeah. You write that one and I will, I will tell you where to submit it. Okay. Aaron Reed, the Millennium Falcon was inspired by a hamburger George was eating for lunch. Yep, fact. Absolutely. I've heard that in like three different documentaries. They're coming up with ideas for, you know, shapes of ships. Right? I loved The Stand, says Natalia. Me too. One of my favorite books. See, Barbarossa, what did I say yesterday during Craig's stream? Says Javon. Yeah. I don't know what you said, so, okay. Sarah says, I'm currently working on narrowing down some ideas and then plotting the first draft before October 31st, 11.59 p.m. Since it takes me a month or so to prep, I'm starting these projects right now, actually. Cool. I don't normally prep this early, to be honest with you, right? But I'm really hyped this year because of all the stuff that people have been talking about. So I'm getting into it. Like, I, my plan this year is to finish the third novel, the, th the draft of the, th of the third novel in the Toy Soldier Saga series. In order to do that, I have to lay out a bunch of stuff. And that um, editing and timeline are the things that I've been working on. You guys have been seeing that. I'm going to do it again today. Right? We're going to work on that. But, um, yeah, I figure I do need actually this month in order to get that organized in such a way that I can just pour out the rest of the damn book. Right? And whatever's left at the time, I'm going to finish the Weird West story I'm working on. That's my plan, anyway. Right? But usually, I never know what I'm writing until at least the 28th of October. I, I'm like, okay, I'm going to do Nano, and I don't even sign up until then. Don't look at the forums. Don't do any of this stuff. Right? But also, this year, I'm officially a municipal liaison, as opposed to an assistant. So they're giving me all the material, and I just, between it all, I can't help but get excited. Right? So... Um, <clears throat> Danny says, a oh, 100%, what if this is my fun idea of bringing method? Absolutely. I have more examples. I will get there. Danny says, actually, one of the topics on my nano prep this month. Cool. Then I hope to make your streams. Your streams are so early, though. I have trouble making them, but I will really try. Um, mine start, or most of my ideas start with, you know what would be funny? <laughs> that's what Cypher Lab has to say. Yeah, actually, comedy writers, that's what they start with. Absolutely. You know, this might be funny. Right? Um, Aaron Reese says, mine start with, I had a dream. Yes. That's another place. Often, that's a very common way for people to get inspiration. They have a dream and they go, you know, shit, that would make a good story. I've gotten story ideas that way. Right? Usually not novels. Um... It's short stories that come to me in dreams like that, but um, one of them was published in a professional magazine that was uh, The World's More Full of Weeping, and it was published in Terra Tara Terror last year. So, yeah, you can get ideas that way, right? Um, Siobhan says, what I said was that you always say good writers borrow, great ones steal, steal, file off the serial numbers, and make them it's up, and make them your own. Yeah. Yeah, they do. Absolutely. That's the other thing. There's no original ideas. Okay? You know, if you're trying to come up with a thing that is like, you know, you, it is a totally original idea in history, and no writer has ever done it before, and, you know since we've had the novel for a few hundred years or you know fiction writing since the dawn of recorded history you're gonna come up with an original idea no you're not okay human nature doesn't change much our experiences remain the same the things that move humans still move humans there's a reason why things like the odyssey stick with us right it's because it speaks to the human experience so you're not going to come up with an original idea what you can come up with is an original voice and an original way of telling it. Fact, right? If you read Earth Abides, to use that example, Stephen King ripped that off whole hawk, right? Absolutely. But 
it's a totally different story because his voice is different and his you know where he went from there is different for him that was the beginning not the whole story right so you know you, you can you can do it um uh he does a lot actually um let's see like he takes a lot of classic science fiction themes makes them you know a little bit more horrific and then it makes it into the mainstream right you think that uh psychic power kids blasting the shit out of everything was original to stephen king dude they were writing that in the 30s okay so um uh salem's lot is basically um i am legend in a small new england town Gift to Gabby says, my character Coma, Coma, okay, is a traveling priestess, a forge master, and a wandering adventurer. She is stopping at a small town to stock up when she hears rumors of a temple needing help. She goes to see what's up. She arrives as a young priestess fighting the older clergy that she can help reclaim the abandoned part of its sister temple. Uh, Coma butts in and says she'll help. I'm stuck on the going there and what happens at the temple part. Ah, the mushy middle. Okay, we're going to work on that next week. Right? Because next week we're going to talk about uh, developing your plot, I believe. I'm just going to double check the calendar to make sure that is correct. No, not next week, the week after. Um, so, uh, the, what is it? Okay, October 1st, 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th, I believe it is. Okay, October 7th, we're going to discuss that. How to develop your plot. How to, how to deal with those points in the story because i i share that with you i have trouble with the getting there sometimes gabby says uh um coma is like 36 the other girl is 20 ish coma is eager to eager to help because of her faith and to help this younger lady come into her own i want it to end shortly after they defeat the monsters and bandits that have taken over the place i want them to find out it's part of something big um feel free to throw out ideas for gabby in the chat by the way Right? If you have uh, thoughts about about that in particular. Like what is uh, what is controlling the temple, right? What is the f what is the conflict there? What is what is the you said reclaim the temple, right? So who's got it? And why do they, you know, have, like what are why do these other people have it? Is it like full of monsters? Is it a rival uh, religion? Like yeah, right. Um, was it taken over by secular authorities to raid the treasury? You know, that happened a lot in history. So, uh, Sarah says, so far I have two to over a hundred ideas, and yet they are more likely to be short story prompts than actual novel length. And that's okay, right? Um, the story is as long as the story needs to be. And I think when you try to pad things, it just makes for boring stories right um the wheel of time series often gets critiqued for this every like and and to be fair so does one of my favorite series which is the honor verse series by david weber right uh sometimes people go okay there's a lot of nothing happening between the actual events but the actual events are still cool enough that you still read the rest of the book and you kind of wonder um is he doing this because he gets paid by the word what's the deal right um, in short stories, you do get paid by the word, but you have a limit, usually a word count limit that I have difficulty meeting almost always. But yeah, right. Uh, conversely, I, you know, in film, for example, or TV, I try to pretend that the last two seasons of Babylon 5 don't exist because the story was over after season five, you know? Okay. Siobhan says, I've gotten scenes that way. Uh, in response to Sarah with the, uh, you know, more short story prompts. And that's fine. You know, not every idea is a novel, you know, and that's all right. So I should probably talk about that. I'll get there. Actually, I'm going to catch up on the chat first and then we'll talk about how you know what you can do with the idea, because that's a good topic. Okay. Uh, Dazzle Cat says, my idea is a what if. Natalia says, my novel started with a dream. Awesome. That's awesome. She's publishing, by the way. I forget the actual date, but it's coming up like right quick. It was in November, wasn't it? Uh, post post the, the date in the chat so people can know. Uh, it's in Dutch. 
right? So if you don't read Dutch, right? I, you know, unfortunately, I don't read Dutch, so I'm probably not going to be able to read it. But I'm very excited and I hope there is an English translation at some point in the future. I know she's doing some translations, so. Yeah, Dazzle Cat says, it's all in the details that you find variety. Absolutely. Yep. Uh, ooh, cool. Natalia says, also got your cover for Book of Secrets. Cool. Are you going to do a cover reveal event? Because that would be really cool. I, I would be interested in that. Congratulations, by the way. Is it a good cover? Do you love it? I hope you do. Um, Barbarossa says, hey Sable, how do you pick when to start a story? When the story begins. When the story begins. Okay, just a second. I gotta make a list. Because we're... I'm glad there are questions. That's awesome. Because we're gonna talk about whatever, you know... I want to help people. I want to help people get their, you know... Get their projects going. Damn it, dead pen. More dead pen. Fine. Sharpie it is. Okay, Sharpie. Now, uh, what to do with a story? How long? Okay. And uh, when to start a story. Okay, yeah, that's a very good question. And it's important. It's really important, actually. So we'll, we'll get into that in a minute. Hang in there. Okay. Siobhan says, my getting there seems to be dragging, but it's setting up other situations further down the overall story arc. Um, writers come in two kinds, overwriters and underwriters. I strongly suspect you are an overwriter. So am I. Um, so your editing process is going to involve a lot of red ink going, you don't need this. You can combine these two scenes. You know, okay, I get that this character development is important. Can we put it in with this other thing so that this is accomplishing two things at once? That's that's what your editing process is going to look like. And that's okay. And you can answer yes or no, right? Um, I mean, that's the benefit of self-publishing or, you know, preparing something before you submit it to a publisher. When you get it to a publisher, they're going to make their own changes and you're you have less options with what you can say yes or no to, right? There's a point at which if you say no, you're gonna have to shop your book elsewhere, right? But, you know, but I mean, like, and, and you'll, you know, you're not gonna work with every publisher, right? Like, don't, I, my advice is don't be so eager to get published that you're willing to sacrifice the essence of what your book is about in order to do it, right? Um, you can be very successful that way, but if you believe Heinlein and Asimov and the stuff they've written about the writing process and dealing with uh, uh, Campbell, right, when Campbell was publishing their stuff, you know, it, it, they went with his suggestions and they became huge successes, but their stories were not what they wanted and history has not been kind to them as a result. So that's up to you, right? On the other hand, don't just go, oh, they disliked my perfect baby and they wanted me to rearrange a bunch of stuff and, you know, ah, ah, ah. Okay, well, if you're going to do that, self-publish because, you you know, you're never going to get traditionally published. It's not going to happen, right? You, you got you to gotta find a compromise there. Okay. Um, Natalia says, you can make the rest of the priests corrupt by another big bad. Yep, that's an option there, Sarah. I think it was Sarah. Yeah, Sarah was looking for ideas about that. Yep, okay. Um, that's great. And then find out by something of a corrupted artifact. That's cool. November 6th. That's when I knew it was November. That's when Natalia's book was coming out. So look for that. Uh, Sarah says, one of the ideas was that I thought about Harry Potter, and I asked myself, what if the werewolves have a more formal education like the wizards and witches, and what would happen if a human enters this school? That's cool. That's great. Yep. I like it. See, there's, there's another thing, right? Um, I think J.K. Rowling used to be a fan of, like, 
English boarding school stories. There were a lot of boarding school stories for teens at one point. There was a very popular series, which I read and enjoyed immensely, right, called uh, um, the McDonald Hall series that was about a boarding school for boys in Canada, right? And I love those books. They were great. And, but there's a particular way those play out. Basically, as far as I can tell, J.K. Rowling took uh, an English boarding school story and said, well, what if there's magic? What if there's a school of magic? Right? And boom. Right. Whatever your opinion is of J.K. Rowling, you must admit that was a good idea. You know, and obviously I worked for her. Okay, Dazzle Cat says, axes and chainsaws editing. Yep, that's what editing my work looks like. Mm -hmm. But it's easier to cut than it is to create more. I don't necessarily agree, actually. That depends on who you are, right? Some people, some people are really brief writers, and I admire their ability to do that. But then they're like, um, okay, like I'm, I'm doing an edit right now, and I, this is a really good writer. And I really admire his work. I, th I think he's excellent. I think he's going to be successful. And he's very brief. And the reason why he's brief is because he visualizes things like a movie. Right? So sometimes he doesn't get into the characters' heads as much as he could. And that's what I'm trying to help him with in terms of developmental edits. And, um, you know, but for him that's a challenge, right? And that's okay. You know, that's okay. Right? For me, it's like, okay, do we really need to know the, the backstory of every fucking tree branch? Right? No, we probably don't. So, but I need someone to tell me objectively, yeah, you don't need that. Take that out. So. But if you don't have anything on the page, then you have nothing to work with. Right? Which is why Nano is good. Because get your stuff down on the page. Right? Then you have something. One word is one more word than you had before. Even if you think the idea is crap, you can make it better, right? But if you don't have anything down on the page to make better, you're never going to do it, right? And so, yeah, that's that's what Nana's all about. Word vomit your story, and then you can, you know, take the chainsaws to it later. I always do. I always do. So... Sean says, I'm aware my novel is going to get the hatchet during edits. Maybe not as bad as I fear, but it might. Yeah, I promised to do her first edit for her, you see, so. Because <laughs> she's my friend. So, um, yeah. Yeah. Probably not as bad as you think, honestly. Okay. Cypherlev says, uh, Ma Mallory Tower, St. Clair's, um, Ian and Blyton wrote dozens of them. Siobhan says, Sable, why? Give me ideas. Telian says, mine will probably need a chainsaw. Yep, it's okay. It's okay to need a chainsaw. I took uh, the first chainsaw. I took to my first draft of A Few Good Elves, the first book in the Toy Soldier Saga series, which is the series I am working on right now. I, I realized it was huge. Like, it was over 170,000 words, and I'm like, okay, I need to focus maybe more on my protagonist, and then I can take out all the side stuff with the other characters, you know? But I didn't throw it out. I put it aside. I'm like, this is still good stuff. I can do something with this. Maybe it'll appear later. And then it became a novella, because that was about half of it written, and then I caught up to what I knew would happen later, and that was actually uh, published in a limited edition book bundle, which is no longer available, which is good because it's got huge spoilers for the rest of the series. So, yeah. Natalia says, good ideas make for good stories. Bad ideas can lead to bestsellers. <laughs> good ideas can also lead to bestsellers. Let's be fair, right? Uh, Siobhan says, this is crap, a novel following an, following an aspiring author in search of publishing. Okay, look, um, Stephen King literally took Carrie, his first ever published novel's manuscript, and chucked it in the trash can. He said, this is garbage, nobody's going to want to read this, I've shopped it out to a million different places, nobody wants it, fuck it. Right? 
His wife fished it out of the trash can and submitted it to one of the big five publishers and led to a six-figure contract for a first-time author. You never know. See, that's another thing. You never know what's going to do well, right? You never know what's going to sell. And it's really just a matter of luck. So it's neither true that good novels inevitably get published. No, they don't. Or that good novels will inevitably be a success. No, you have to have luck, right? But it also isn't true that just because something is popular that it's crap. I have seen a lot of popular crap, right? And it feels like that sometimes, right? But honestly, the, the books that sell the best are biographies of people who are already famous. And, you know, that's why the big five publishers concentrate on those and seem to take less and less new authors every year and give them a shot because corporations are inherently conservative and they will go with what they know sells. That's what they know sells. They don't know if this new author is a genius or an idiot. The, there's been no more opaque market in the history of market and they have no idea what's going to sell, right? So they don't want to take chances on new authors and make it really difficult to get to see them if you're a new author, right? You're better off trying to get published with a smaller publisher or a medium-sized publisher, right? Because they're more likely to look at you. Um, not a lot of people even do slush piles anymore. And for those who don't know, slush piles is when you have a pile of stuff that's sent in cold by brand new authors that weren't contacted. You know, you didn't get a hold of them through a literary agent, right? And you just kind of skim it to see if it's good, which can be very disheartening if you've ever seen. I watched a, a, a stream that uh, Bain Books did about going through their slush pile. They're a science fiction publisher and they literally read the first paragraph and if they didn't like it, crap, right? So I once had a story rejected from a magazine, okay? Um, it, it, it was a longish story, right? Uh, about 10,000 words, so a novelette, right? And I submitted it to a fantasy publisher magazine and they sent it back to me and said, and it was a toy soldier story, right? And they sent it back to me and said, if it has space stations in it, it's science fiction. We only publish fantasy, right? And I'm like, well, if you'd fucking read the first page, you would have heard about elves and magic, and therefore you would have known it was fantasy. It's just in space. But that's how the publishing business is, guys. That's how it is, right? So it's a hard road. You never know what's going to be successful. You have no idea, right? Um, okay, so that leads into how do you know if an idea is good? You don't. You have no idea. Right. Um, okay. So, uh, Carrie is a great book, right? It's a great book. And Stephen King thought it was garbage and that it would never get published. Right. Um, but some of the most successful books in the past couple of decades, have been um, a boarding school, an English boarding school story with magic thrown in, <clears throat> right? Um, vampires, when everybody said, yeah, Anne Rice did the vampires, so vampires are dead, no more vampires, right? So if, you, if, uh, if uh, Stephanie Meyer were writing to market, she never would have written Twilight, right? And a fan fiction of those vampire books where they took the vampires out and made it all about BDSM, sort of, because that's not really how BDSM works, sex, okay? And we're talking about Fifty Shades of Grey, right? So you never know, right? If you go back and you look at, okay, so who were the best-selling novelists of the 1950s? You will recognize maybe one of 20 names, you have no idea what is a good idea. There's tons of stories of writers who were never acknowledged in their lifetime who became classics after their death. I don't want to be one of those, by the way, because I need to eat. 
you know. Um, uh, there's, there's so many examples of that, right? Um, Arthur Conan Doyle thought that he would be remembered for his White Company novels, and he viewed Sherlock as schlock, and he tried to kill off the character because he got so frustrated with it. Um, uh, uh, Howard, right? Uh, Robert E. Howard, creator of Conan, died with the one magazine that would publish his stories more, most often still owing him thousands of dollars because they hadn't paid him, right? So you never know what's going to be a good idea. So the answer to that question is, does it stick with you? Stephen King says in his book on writing that he's often asked if he keeps a notebook to jot down ideas for stories and a lot of writers do this and there's nothing wrong with that that's a perfectly legitimate way if that's part of your process but he doesn't and the reason why he doesn't is he says i'll remember the good ones and i think that's true if an idea has stuck with you if you've been thinking about it for a couple of years and you know you think you know i really should write this story you should write the story it's a good idea Will it be a success? I don't know, but it's a good idea because it stuck with you. And there's a reason why it did. There's something you're trying to say, something your unique voice wants to present to the world. And that story is not going away because of the message that you're trying to communicate, whatever it is. And I'm not even talking about, it doesn't even have to be grand, you know, right? It, it, you know, it can be adolescent sucks. Lots of people have written books about that. We all agree it does. So they keep selling, right? Um, it could be about, you know, uh, fuck this dystopia. And that keeps selling too. Like I said, there's no original idea, right? It could be about, holy shit, if we keep going in the same uh, path that we're currently going on, we're screwed. I need to warn people. That book sells well. Lots of people have written that book. Right? But there's a reason why it sticks with you. There's something you need to say. So say it. Okay, Cypher Love says, okay, I actually, I do know who Blyton is, actually, but uh, says, Blyton was a very famous English writer. She wrote dozens of boarding school books in several series that Rowling would definitely know about, and which you can see in the influence of in Harry Potter. But I haven't read her. I know who she is, but I haven't read her. But I'll take your word for that. I, I'm certain you're probably right. Yeah, I, I have no doubt that's true. Yeah. Um, Gr uh, Sarah Grimm says, Then the weirdest thing that pops up in my mind recently was to write about a mysterious entity that I somehow befriended in my life. Um, many pagan novelists have started books that way. Also, many... Uh, it just, you know, people with different belief systems, right? Spiritualists and, you know... Uh, many people have written, many Christians have written about their experience of finding God. How about it? There's something in the human experience that that speaks to. Talk about it. You know, people, people will like it. Danny, BDSM. Mm-hmm. Yeah. BDSM in Fifty Shades Grey. It isn't really. It's nothing like actual BDSM. If you know anything about the kink community, which of course I do, I move in all the subcultures. Like, if it's a nerd subculture, like, they all overlap in a Venn diagram, right? If you've ever been to an SCA event, right? Uh, a Comic Con, a, uh, uh, you know, like, you know, anything, a writer's convention, you've met somebody who's into kink. You may not know it at the time, but all those communities all move in similar circles, right? So, uh, yeah, that's not at all what it's like, right? It uh, There's some serious, there's stuff that would be offensive to the BDSM community in there because it's very questionable consent, and consent is very important in any kink community. It's absolutely, it's like the number one sacrosanct rule, okay? Sacrosanct, whatever, yeah. Natalia points out Jane Austen, hardly recognized it all in her life, and, you know, a classic after her death, right? Uh, Barbarossa, what do you mean, start where the action starts? Okay. 
Yes, food is good, Sable. Okay. All right. I'll 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 get into that now. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So um where do you start the story? Yeah. What do I mean by that? Where the action starts? Okay, so um, there's a reason why the current co common wisdom is do not write a prologue. And that reason is because people get bored. It sounds like a lot of pressure, and it is, right? But it doesn't have to be exactly. You kind of got to hook your reader within the first page, preferably within the first paragraph, ideally within the first line. In order to do that, something's got to be happening. It can't be leading up to, right? So you can, you can, uh, if you feel you must build up the character, right? Then the key is to start where the beginning of the change starts, right? The thing that is going to be the incentive, right? The, um, they have a term they use for this in writing and I have it's blown my mind right but the inciting incident right the inciting incident is about to start you need to if you're if you're like okay I'm gonna I'm gonna screw up their life and that's the key but they have to know what life is like before you screw it up then then start like right before that life is screwed up right and establish the conflict fairly quickly and if you can't do that then give the readers hooks and questions that will keep them wondering what is going to happen until the action breaks right so um i'm better at this in some stories than others the weird west starts with a shootout and the reason why it starts with a shootout is uh, like that. That's the point where the character, you know, makes the decision to get involved in the conflict and stop the bad guy. It's actually a pretty straightforward Western plot, right? Real, real trope, honestly, right? But what I do with it, I think, is a little different. So um it's a post-apocalyptic western so this is not our same society and there's also magic involved right the protagonist is a half elf right a half elf you know cowboy right who wants to be a gunslinger which is like a paladin with a gun in my universe right so the, the, the shootout happens he's not qualified to deal with the bad guy but he's the only one there who has a who has the remotest closeness of the skills. So he, you know, he's gonna stop him. And then because the bad guy is outnumbered, right, he challenges, you know, he says, All right, I I reckon you'll honor a showdown, right? And that's that's the inciting incident. But um my first line is the gunslinger and the desperado drew. Right, so you already know, bam, we're in the action, here's the fight, we're gonna do this. Okay, now, this is a tricky technique to get right, and I wouldn't have tried this earlier as a writer, but I felt I could do it now. Although, one of the critiques I've gotten, because I felt that I had to fill in the backstory a bit, is that I did things in terms of flashbacks, right? to get the sense of who this character is and why he has ended up in this situation. And some of my critiques were like, I don't understand why she did that. So, right? I didn't do it perfectly, right? It's a, it's a little awkward and that's okay, right? But, but it was enough that I got people reading the book. My reviews have generally been pretty good, okay? So, um toy soldier is a little different right um there's a lot of stuff like i actually tried to cut out a bunch of the book and just start where the action started and then i got a review back from a, a friend of mine who was doing a beta read edit and he was like i don't like your character i don't like your situation you know right 
because he didn't understand it at all. It sounded like everything was going really swimming for him, right? And that's not interesting. Well, okay, but actually the thing was, is that the part I cut out, things were going pretty shitty for him for a while, right? Then all of a sudden he had like a spike of things that went really well, and then things went really shitty, right? That's, you know, an unusual arc. We'll, we'll get into that. I think I might be able to cover that on the developing your plot. And if not, I will cover it in the last week of October before NaNo, because there's nothing specifically prepped over scheduled, right? But I'll talk about that. There's like an arc, a line, the way stories work. And you've all seen this, you know, like this, like this, like this, building action, climax, resolution. Not all stories work that way, actually, and not all uh, stories that stick with people work that way. So, uh, Kurt Vonnegut, I think it was who had like different uh, graphs of the way stories go and what tends to stick and I will bone up on that material remind myself of it and we'll cover it in the last week of October if I don't get a chance before then okay so um, okay for me I had to start with the character because it's a character driven story a lot of what happens in Toy Soldier happens because of the decisions that the protagonist makes. So why did he make those decisions is important. So I started instead with um, the things that drove him to make those decisions, right? The things that made him who he was. So I had to start much earlier. I had to start when he was still a kid. Right? Um, do I know if this is successful? No, I have no idea. Right? And, um, you know, I hope my beta readers will tell me. Right? Because I'm still working on it. All right, we have a raid. Welcome, Time Pool. The voices have told you to come and invade me. Awesome. That's great. Good to see you. Okay. Siobhan says, My story has stuck with me and has developed more without me concentrating on it. Sometimes that happens. Yeah, you need to give your... your uh... Okay, writing is dreaming. Cre creating is dreaming. So you need to give it space to dream. Right? You have to daydream or you have to dream at night. If you're constantly busy with other things... And you don't give yourself room to dream, you never will create the ideas to write. So that's that's how you create the soup that that stories breed in, right? The the I don't know. It sounds horrible, but I'm not, the idea I'm thinking of is like you know organic swamp kind of deal, right? And you know things bubbling and brewing under the surface, and then you know life comes out of that, right? Um, it's just, it, you know you you need to give it places to breed, so. Yeah. Um, Sarah says, but it's not really religious. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna read Sarah's comments because they're in a sequence, right? What I mean is just a vague idea of a psychological type of fiction, yet it is rather confusing to describe the unknown. Kind of like Lovecraftian horror, but the supernatural is toned down into something imaginary yet traumatic. That's cool. So there's like creepy shit in the old temple. In you know, might be elder horrors, and we don't know. That's awesome. We should talk to Time Pool about elder horrors. Yeah. Okay. Um. Barbarossa says, "Story idea. Went on a quest to find God. Found Satan instead. Now he won't leave me alone." <laughs> that story's been written. A couple of times by a couple of different people, some humorous, some dramatic, and some horrific, right? Um, check out the Screw Tape Letters by C.S. Lewis, a classic, right? But, oh, and the Satanic Verses, right? Um, but, uh, um, but they're cool, right? Like, you know, there's a reason why that story's been written. Right? And you can write it in your own way. And obviously it's a good idea. There are several uh, classics, both uh, 
enduring and modern that have been written with that theme, right? So that's a that's an idea, you know? If you've got a new take on something that has done well, right? They call that writing to market. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's okay, right? If you like, hey, you know, I take all the science fiction tr and fantasy tropes and I put them together in genre mashups and I write them. That's what I do, right? Because I love that shit and I think it's awesome. And yeah, I know it's been done a million times, but nobody's done it my way. I know they haven't, right? I've got something new to add. So I'm going to add it. But ultimately, if you go through and you, you know, put up TV tropes while you're reading any one of my books or stories and just start checking shit off because it's there, right? It's been done and that's okay. That's okay because my way is new. As a matter of fact, my way is so new in some cases that I have trouble selling it because um, fantasy readers go westerns, blah, you know. And, uh, you know, science fiction readers go magic, blah, you know, and they don't give it a shot. Finding your market or something we'll discuss in a future topic. Um, oh, good. Information exchange. That's excellent. The Devil and Max Devlin. Yeah, that was good. Yeah, I saw that. That was a movie. I saw that movie. That was a good movie. Uh, Sarah says I've written something odd and I it read as follows and author goddess is here hello and welcome awesome glad to see you story ideas yes we're discussing about uh, where you get ideas right um, and whether they're good mezzo nine is here good to see you welcome I haven't seen you in a while I'm glad to see you um, most of what Terry Pratchett wrote was his take on things other people had already written and he still got knighted for services to English literature. True story. Also, Douglas Adams made his career in exactly the same way, doing the exact same thing, right? So, you know, I mean, okay, actually, I don't know. I'm going to look it up. Which one was published first, right? Was it uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy? I'm going to check that out. Right? Or was it, um, I think The Color of Magic was the first uh, disc world, right? So, ah, Kahuna has come to raid us. Aloha, Kahuna. Welcome. And all the Karuna, Kahuna crew. Good to see you. Thank you very much for the raid. That's awesome. Yes. Okay, so The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy was first published in 1979. And somebody else is answering me in the chat. Color of Magic was the first one. Yes, I was correct. Okay. The Color of Magic. Ha! 1983. Okay, so there, there's a wonderful example of what I'm talking about. About just because it's been done doesn't mean you can't do it in your own unique way. Right? The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy was already a thing. Right? So a, a you know, satirical take on speculative fiction that was very successful was already a thing when Terry Pratchett put pen to the first Discworld book. And he still had a different way, right? He had his own voice. Everybody who's read Terry Pratchett knows that it's the way he tells the story that makes the damn book. And it's amazing, right? And he, you know, he's considered, he was knighted for his services to English literature and awarded a metric shit ton of awards, right? Um, he uh, got a, uh, what is the one, the uh, Soul, no, not the Solstice Award. There's a Lifetime Achievement Award. It's not the Grand Master because you have to be alive to get that at the, uh, uh, um, you know, Nebula's Grand Masters, right? Um, but he got, uh, you know, like their, I don't remember what their lifetime achievement was, just, but, but he got that, right? And the World Fantasy Award numerous times, and on and on, and he deserved every single damn one of those awards because he was a fucking genius, okay? Right, but it's a good example. Hey, Aegon, good to see you, and thank you for that, by the way. 
Yeah, Dirk Gently was also an Adams series. Yep, correct. I'm not as fond of that, but, you know, <clears throat> it was good. I just don't like it as much as I like Hitchhiker's Guide. But, eh, that's okay. Everybody's got their own their own thing. And it was good. I agree. Um, Aegon says, Terry was a sad lose. I love the Discworld series. No doubt. Yep. Also good omens. Yep. Uh... Sarah's lines, this entity takes hundreds if not thousands of forms, yet I couldn't see it. However, I could hear their voice, and surprisingly enough, I felt that comfort from the voice than the rash, cold-hearted voices of others in my life. Neat. It was a take on Sherlock Holmes. Okay, cool. Yeah, I, I am aware. I know what it is. I just haven't read it, like, fully yet. I tried to read the first book. I couldn't get into it. Then the library wanted the book back. So, but that's okay. You know, everybody's got their own taste. Okay. So, <clears throat> what to do if you don't have good story ideas? Like, if you're like, I don't know, do, you know, I, I, I want to write, but I don't know what I want to write. What you need to do is give yourself a place in which the story to breed. I touched on this briefly, but you need to take time to allow yourself to dream, right? And that might, I mean, however, however you do that, maybe you, lots of writers take long drives. Um, sometimes writers go to coffee shops just to get away from, uh, you know, the people in their house and the normal everyday, uh, you know, existence. Um, long walks are good things. Stephen King does a um, walk every day, right? And he did it partially for his health, but he also does it for his creative juices, right? Um, sadly, drugs often work. I'm not gonna lie, right? Other people will say like, oh, you know, nobody wants to talk about that, but the truth is there's a reason why there's substance abuse problems among writers a lot, and it's because um, these substances change your consciousness and can make it easier for you to access the part of your mind that does dreaming, right? So, you know, um, ultimately that will burn you out and it is not a recommended thing, especially if it's an addictive substance. There's also been hundreds of stories of writers who have, you know, quit addictive substances, Stephen King being one of them, right? Who will tell you that for a while it was really hard, not necessarily even because of the addiction, but because he became reliant on it to write. So I highly recommend you use other methods, but you can do that. It does work, you know, it's going to kill you, but... You know, there's a reason. Um, yeah, what to do? Ask me. I got a million, says says author goddess. Yes, because uh, Sarah Berman gives herself time to dream. And things, you know, things boil out of her subconscious. She's got stuff to say. Yeah. <clears throat> Dazzle Cat says, it has no substance until you feel it. It has no form until you see it. That's awesome. Yeah, that's a very cool uh, start there, Sarah. I don't know if I said that in particular. I've, you've got some grammatical mistakes that need some work, but I, I totally get the feel, and you're right. That's very Lovecraftian, and it's neat. Yeah. <laughs> Natalia says, I need to give my pillow and cat some love. Right, okay. Sarah says, reality is more of a cold than a sheer warmth of the unknown depths of the mind. This entity, who is later called Lurie, would linger so close to my ears, yet I could not help but relate to this entity. Neat. Yeah. See you, Natalia. Thanks for joining us. Oh, and Dazzle Cat's off, too? Oh, no. Okay. No. Okay. Cypher Love says, Coffee! Most writers that I know have a very unhealthy relationship with coffee, myself included. Okay. Author Goddess says, I don't use drugs. I am a drug. Lick me. <laughs> mine is empty. Pouts. I think we'll get more for mine in just a minute. Okay. Yeah. All right. So last thing I was going to talk about. What do you do with a story? Okay. You got an idea. 
What are you going to do with it? Is it a short story? Is it a novel? Is it, you know, one of those hard to sell things in between called novelettes or novellas? You know, um, is it flash fiction? Um, okay. So this gets more into plotting, which is something, again, we're going to deal with later on, right? Um, not next week, but the week after, right? But yeah, figure out what the story is. You've got your what if, right? What if X? Lots of science fiction writers start with, what if this technology thing happened, right? Um, and that's a good story. There's nothing, that's a good story. It's legit. Um, Arthur Clarke is not a very good writer. I realize that, uh, you know, there's a lot of sci-fi fan bros who are going to be all like, no, but, but he's not. He's not a good writer. He's clunky and awkward and weird, right? But he's a master of the what if, right? Um, what if somebody built a space elevator? You know, how would that have to work? I mean, he's got to come up with a concept, right? You know, um, and this is one of the things that um, SpaceX is talking about eventually trying to incorporate in order to um, get spacecraft more easily into space, right? So it's a legit idea, right? How, how would that have to work? How could we build a structure that is so tall that it literally pokes out of the atmosphere, right? Um, we'll have to have certain uh, gravitational effects what if okay and and this is like a real thing there's actually a place i believe i, I don't remember exactly where it is but in in the story because he sort of made up the nation around it right but um this place actually exists right where gravity is less than it is anywhere else on earth gravity varies it's not a constant actually right it all depends kind of on where you are so uh that's the place where we should build the space elevator but the problem is there's a lot there was a temple there right an ancient buddhist temple and now what do you do right you've got this great idea for the space elevator but here's these people right um i think we're having this conflict right now aren't we there's a, a um, a, a launch site for spacecraft that they're trying to build on traditional indigenous land and they're like no no we don't want this here right you, there's a story right and it's complex so you got it all right um arthur clark is also an underwriter right he's one of those guys who doesn't get into the heads of his characters very well a lot so um you know it was a shorter novel than it might have been in somebody else's hands but it's definitely a novel um, let's see. Uh, I'm not very good at coming up with flash fiction. I don't, uh, I don't have a lot of ideas that fit in the flash fiction idea. Right? But one of my ideas was... There is a type of spider that masquerades as an ant. It is shaped in such a way that it can move its, uh, like it, it kind of rearranges its legs to look like antenna, and it looks very much like a particular species of ant. So it lures them in, and then it eats them. And I thought, that's basically a vampire, isn't it? And then I had a flash fiction story, because that's not really a very complex idea, but it is interesting. Right? At least I think it's interesting. Yeah, certainly less harmful than my cigarettes, says Mezzo9. Well, I smoke too. <laughs> I smoke cigars. So, yeah. Yeah. Gotta have a point, says Author Goddess. I agree. Characters are great. Scenes are great. A story has to have a plot. Yes. Yes, you have to have a point, right? There has to be a point to it, right? So Arthur Clarke's point was, 
is the uh, importance of a space elevator, like, look, he asked a couple of questions. There were a couple of points, right? One is, how important is a space elevator, right? This is a great idea. It will help us get to the stars. Getting to the stars is really important for humanity. How important, uh, you know, how, how important is this, right? Does it, does the importance of this trump the needs of faith does it trump personal needs right because the protagonist basically uh he, i don't want to spoil the book but he gives a lot of himself in order to make this happen right is it worth sacrificing one person's life for this greater whole right he, he was asking these ethical questions and that was his point right and then the process of how it was done were the, was the mechanism by which that story was told, right? So, I, you know, oh, you know, I've, I've got to, now that I've mentioned this repeatedly, I think I need to, to remember what the title of the book was. Just a second. I mean, actually, this isn't one of his uh, more popular works, right? It, I mean, he, he wrote 2001. It's not 2001, and it's not Childhood's End. Uh... Sorry, guys. I don't know. I can't remember which one it is right now, but damn, I mean, like... The Fountains of Paradise. That's the book. The Fountains of Paradise by Arthur C. Clarke. That's the book I'm talking about. Okay. Uh, Danny says the snozberries taste like snozberries. <laughs> Author Goddess says space elevator wouldn't work. Wind shearing and the issues of aligning orbit. Yeah, um, he had a MacGuffin, right? And his MacGuffin was a much more stable material that could hold its molecular capacity at a monofilament. That's kind of actually where the idea of monofilaments in... Uh, and uh, science fiction come from is that book as well, right? Yeah, we don't currently have the technology to do it based on the laws of physics as we know them, right? But it's something that people are actually working on. There are super dense materials that we're in the process of being able to create that actually probably could do this, right? Um, the question right now is to make them cheap enough that they'll handle the wind shear. And will it work based on the gravitational fluctuations? We still don't know that. That might not, it might not, right? Even even with like wind shear, we might be able to handle. We don't know about gravity, right? So, but they're working on it, right? It's a thing they're, they're looking into. Uh, Delian says, uh, let's just make a big trampoline and jump to space. Uh, that idea is kind of, you know, how rockets work. <laughs> right? Siobhan says, I struggle with Clark. His flow is wrong. Yeah, it, it's clunky, right? Author Goddess says, the shorter the story, the simpler it must be. Flash fic is just a poignant scene. But, uh, yeah, true, but a flash fiction is also a complete story in that it has a beginning, middle, and end and a point, right? Um, if it... I mean, it is just basically a pointed scene, but the scene has a point. It says something in the, in that scene, which is why I'm not very good at it, really. I don't I don't think I am anyway. Um, but okay, so short stories, right? Um, 
No. Okay, so flash fiction, right? Generally, a thousand words or less. Okay. Short story, between a thousand and... I don't know, 5,000 words, I think, which is why they always tell you, like, you know, 5,000 word limit when you're submitting to magazines, usually, right? Um, novelette, about 5,000 to 10,000 words. Novella, between 10 to 40,000 or 50,000 words. Novel starts at about 50,000 words. That is why that is the goal for National Novel Writing Month, right? Yeah, uh, Siobhan says, I had Greg tell me a scene was a great story in and of itself. And yeah, that probably is true that it, then that would be a good piece of flash fiction, right? It's got a beginning, middle, and end, and it's got a point within that scene. And um, well-crafted scenes often do that, right? Or they end on cliffhangers that lead to different scenes, and that's how you get a novel, right? Okay, so a novel's a complex idea, right? And a flash fi uh, fiction piece, like uh, Author Goddess said, is basically a poignant scene, right? And then there's, like, levels in between. And to be honest with you, I never know, right? Like, I'll start writing... I, I know the difference between a short story, flash fiction, and novel when I sit down to write it. But... I don't necessarily know how long of a story it's going to be, right? Because that's the way my process works. I'm sort of a, a I'm a planter, right? I have a, a roadmap loosely. How I'm going to get there, I don't know, right? I'll figure it out. And they don't necessarily end the way I expect them to either, right? So the, the book is feral, um, has bitten before, and may bite again, right? Dropping a lot of frames. Why? You have no reason. You suck. Okay. Good. We're back. But, um, so I just kind of, you know, I start writing and I let it tell me. But, yeah, but I can tell the difference between the two, right? A short story is like, okay, uh, Showdown. Uh, Showdown was a weird one because Showdown was a, a, novel, a novelette. Okay. Short stories. What's a short story? The Android Graveyard was a short story that I had, uh... Oh no, I mixed up. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. I mixed up which story was published in which book. <laughs> um, I was talking about, um, The World's More Full of Weeping, and I was, uh, uh, that was published in, uh, by Aaron Nothing Miss Press in Cities of Dust, Plains of Light. Um, the, uh, the story I had published in Terra Tara Terra was, uh, um, the Android Graveyard. Okay, so my idea is, uh, we're pretty close to human awareness for AI. The singularity might happen at any time. So what happens to androids when they wear out? Okay, and I knew that that was a short story because I was going to use it to say something about the human condition. Right. Um, I had recently had a, a loss in my life, and that played a role in the story. And I knew what I was trying to say. So, um, but I didn't know how long the story was going to be. Right? Uh, turns out the story was about, I think, 3,800 words. So, you know, not as long as some. Right? But longer than others. Uh, Yeah, right. So you kind of you kind of have a, a, an idea, right? Because I, I had a very specific idea about something I was saying about the human condition, right? And I felt I could do that in a very short period, right? But on the other hand, um, okay, so I've got this story idea, right? And it's, uh, well, uh, it's about. Okay, so it's your typical chosen one fantasy trope. The person is actually a, a secret monarch that was hidden away and now until they were ready to, you know, gather an army and take the throne back from the people who over the evil bad guys who overthrew their parents, right? Except that 
I ran with a couple of tropes and I thought about them, right? I've, I've taken a stab at this book already. I did it for Nano one year, but I'm not happy with it and I feel I need a rewrite. I will reapproach it at some point, but I knew it was a novel, right? Um, there's twists to that, right? And the twist being, okay, but what if we actually thought out the tropes and thought about the things that make these tropes happen and gave them like, you know, how would they play out in a more realistic world, right? And that was, that was my angle, right? I knew that, I know that's a novel. Um, and then I've got another story, right? In the Toy Soldier Saga, right? Uh, there's a character and he lies about his age and joins the Space Navy in order to fight a war against their people's ancient enemies. Except that, you know, like World War I, a lot of guys going off to war thinking that they're going to do some glorious deeds like they talk about in, you know, the songs and the stories they've all grown up with. Because, you know, they've all come out of this age of colonialism, right? War is fucking hell, right? It's, it's not, you know, glorious. It's, you know, it's horrible, right? Okay, it is glorious, but because it's horrible. Like, let's be honest here, right? But, um, so that's really big, right? Especially because I'm talking about it happening in space, right? When things are in space, they're bigger. So, that's a series, right? Because that's really complex. Especially because I also touch on the aftermath of war and how it has affected it in the long term, right? Yeah. Author Goddess says, A good scene should have a beginning, middle, and end, and a point, always. Absolutely. Yeah, it should. Right? But the end might be to be continued because you may not exactly finish the whole idea in the scene. Like, you may be setting up something that's going to pay off three scenes later, right? Or in the next chapter, or the next part, or even the next book, right? But you know that. Because you do that all the time. Yeah. I don't have to tell you. You know what you're doing. <laughs> and hello, Dinosaur Bob. Welcome. Good to see you. Okay, I think I've run out of things that I specifically wanted to talk about today in terms of story ideas. I'm going to take a very belated break and if you guys have ideas about or questions, that knows nothing, says our goddess, the more you know, the more you realize you know nothing. Yeah, I can relate. All right, so yeah, I'm going to take a belated break. Um, you know, if you guys think of anything else that you would like me to talk about in regards to story ideas, right, or you have questions or thoughts, then, or comments, you want to share more of your ideas, that's cool too. I'm, I'm getting excited about some of the stuff you guys say you're going to write. That's great. Right? Um, yeah, let me know. And I'll be back in a few
Did my ad work, by the way? Twitch now says that they're going to start interrupting my stream or our streams if we haven't rolled ads on our own. So I figure I will pick times when I am on a break anyway. My ads ran. Okay, good. I can't tell on my stream manager. You'd think the damn thing would show me, right? But it doesn't. All right. Siobhan says, Sable, I would like to borrow one of your books, if I may. Herbology, research for my novel and an article I'm planning on writing for World Anvil. An author goddess asks her, are you looking for medicinal or magical herbology? I would ask the same question. I'm guessing probably both and probably from a druidic perspective, right? I have a couple of books you might want to borrow. Come by. Yeah. Of course. Oh my god, we got PIP for mid-roll ads now. Sweet, says Mezzanine. Cool. Yep. My story has... Uh, Dazzle Cat says, My story has, uh, as the main character, having gobs of magical stuff, but unable to freely use it without consequence. That's awesome. <clears throat> That's always fun. There should always be consequences. I like that sort of a monkey's paw kind of scenario. That's cool. Oh, is it still running the ad while I'm talking? That's bullshit. Oh, you got the ad late. Oh, right. I forgot about lag. That's okay. You haven't missed anything other than come by. I have books. Um, uh, I have the same question as author goddess. Is it magical or, uh, you know, like medicinal herbology? Probably both knowing you and probably from a druid perspective. I have a couple books. Come by. Um, Dazzle Cat says, sort of like a magical Batman and greatest American hero. Oh, cool. I like that. I like that a lot. I liked that show, The Greatest American Hero. You guys ever seen that show? That's like an old 80s show, I think. That was, you know. That show does not get enough credit, man. Like, right now, there's a big thing in superhero fiction right about uh you know what would be the real life consequences of having these kind of powers and having people that have these kind of powers and that was the first show that ever addressed it and it addressed it from a comedic sort of standpoint and you know it was awesome how the theme song go believe it or not i'm walking on air i never thought i could feel so free flying away on a wind and a prayer Ooh, it's me believe it or not it's just me yeah it was cool it's a cool show yeah she all remembers now yep theme song i knew it i knew that trigger <laughs> Dinosaur Bob says, I know people are complaining about the interrupting ads, but they're going to be in place of the ads that people see before they join the stream. Oh, well, that's better then, because especially if we can choose when they are, that's cool. Because nothing pisses me off more than when I'm like, oh, okay, here's the stream I've been waiting for. Ah, all right, I'm going to go in. Ads. You're like, did I miss anything important? Yeah, I hate that. <laughs> oh, I remember now. Splat into a billboard. Yeah, she does the cats to splat into a billboard. Yep, yep. Author Goddess in the movie Condor Man. Also good. Also good. Way underestimated. Uh, on a recent list, I saw the worst superhero movies of all time and it topped the list. I'm like, no, no, no. You don't get it. Ooh, you can sing, says Mezzo9. Thank you. I sort of moonlight as a uh, as a singer, actually. I, I used to be a... Uh, well, I was trying to make it as a pro musician. I think I was semi-pro. I had a goth band that was doing really well. We were kind of doing what uh, um, Evanescence does like 10 years before they did it. And we were starting to make headway and then the band broke up because life, because we're poor, basically. So, unfortunately, but um, yeah, Aaron plays my, my music on his streams. So, you want to check it out? Um, here's... Uh, some of it. Where am I here? Because I put it in Moobot! Ha ha ha! Just in case people ask, but yeah, there's one. Right? And then, uh, you can see I designed it for Aaron's stream, right? And then there's the golf band. So, <clears throat> yeah. Uh, Dinosaur Bob says in the long run, yeah, 
in, in the long run, it'll be better for streamers since people surfing uh, to find a channel won't skip over a channel that starts with a 30 second ad. <clears throat> I never do, you know, because I know that means they're affiliates and you just put up with the ad and then you check it out, right? Mezzanine says it's actually always worked that way. If you play a 30 second mid roll ad, viewers joining don't get ads for 30 minutes or something like that. Cool. Uh, yeah, it said t disabled for 21 minutes. So, okay. Author Goddess says it angers me that you can't find these things streaming, but we got crap reality TV. True story. Mezzanine says Twitch don't advertise it well. Fact. Dazzlecat says, which is how my char uh, character first adventure failed so bad he is a fence for the kobolds. <laughs> Siobhan says, I do sometimes too. Yeah. Um, yeah. Sings. Yep. Uh, yes, yeah, she does. Uh, Dennis Nabob says, FYI, subscribers won't see ads. Non-subs will be paused, when inter which introduce more lag, but they shouldn't meet any, miss anything. I guess that explains why the World Anvil uh, stream always cuts off in the middle of grab your hammer and go world build. <laughs> okay. Which I didn't know. Thanks for that information. Actually, it's very helpful. Okay, I don't see any more comments or questions about story ideas in the chat. So, uh, we're going to move on to the second part of what I had planned for today. Now, um, again, right? I, I said I was going to do it at the end of the stream, but I'll do it now because I see there's a lot of people that I don't think were here at the start of the stream on Friday. Uh, 12 o'clock p.m. Pacific time. Uh, we are going to do a special one-hour stream. This will directly follow the World Anvil uh, tutorial stream that is on Fridays. And we will be talking about a, a uh, sort of a contest type event, although it's not really a contest, that a lot of the Anvilite Streamer Core writers are doing for National Novel Writing Month. And um, I still haven't worked out all the logistics. This could be fun. Uh, total chaos. Could be great. But I'm very excited about it. Uh, a lot of writers have been working on it. Danny Adventures for one uh, example. Siobhan the Writer for another. Darth Nicholas for a third. These are uh, people who have appeared in the chat. Also, uh, Chrysalia, who streams at like one or two in the morning my time, right? And because she's in Malaysia. Right, and Coffee Quills, who is in Japan, right? Um, and I don't know who else might be interested, but we're, we're uh, th these are the people who've been kind of planning it, right? And we're going to do the reveal of what the event is and how you can get involved on Friday. So I'm very excited. That will be right after the World Anvil stream and right before Aaron's uh, Ask an Old GM stream. So, yeah, very excited about this. All right. Part two was I was going to get some writing done. What do you guys think? Shall we do that? I still got editing to do for my nano prep, put things in my book and, uh, you know, get it all ready and organize my timeline for the event. Author Goddess is all for the writing. Right, right, right. <laughs> I have a new emoji too says right 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 i'm excited about that too see there we go oh more writing says siobhan are you kind of like burnt out on the writing <laughs> she's been working like a demon she's been doing nanorimo every month basically by doing her stream i talk too much for that shit <laughs> but that's cool nah says bob <laughs> You're funny, yeah, it's great. I've got to bring my phone in here today, so I'll have to make sure to check the chat more in detail. Okay, look over there more. If you see me looking over there, I'm looking at the chat. All right, let's get her done, shall we? Mezzanine says, So many sprint streams, I find myself writing all day lately. It's great. I love it too. I just adore it, actually. It make it's it's so cool that there's so many streamers who are doing 
writing sprint streams. I'm going to be doing that pretty much every day uh, during November at various times. Um, yeah, let's see. And uh, except for the days when Aaron is doing his Ask Noel GM streams. But one or the other of us, because he's also going to do writing sprint streams later in the evening, right? We'll be doing a writing sprint stream every day. There's so many actually here. Uh, I will put a link in the chat for you. Okay, so this is the link you want. Right, and uh, I know there's going to be more too. Don't uh, forget to check out the uh, Twitch Writers Network Discord. Because they are also doing... I'm sure they'll be doing all kinds of writing streams. You go there, right, and you will see a bunch of events. Uh, Skip ahead in the calendar to November. Just a second, I'll show you that on my main screen here. Right? This is November, right? Pretty much all this is like writing streams. Like. Yeah. Write ins. You know, Nano Extra, Diane Writes will be all about writing sprints and getting shit done. And in between, on the breaks, we'll answer questions. So yeah, lots and lots of stuff. Danny's doing streams for writing. Greg will be doing his regular streams. That's Writer Greg. Right? Uh, Hefe will be doing writing streams. Shy Red Fox will be doing lots of write-ins here. Right? Darth Nicholas. This is all Chrysalia, A Soul and Heart. Um, that's, uh, their stream. Yeah. And then this stuff right with Aaron, that's Aaron doing writing streams. Don't forget that this, uh, calendar is in United Kingdom time, so you may have to peel it backward an hour, depending if your region, uh, does or does not observe Daylight Savings Time. So. Alright, we're gonna get some writing done. Here's my manuscript. There it is. I'll be doing editing, but focus period of work, guys. Siobhan says, nope, not burnt out. That's good. Excellent. Dazzle Cat says, I'm working out the hunt for grandfather's murderer while other things happen. Cool. Siobhan says, also, there is not an adjustment yet for time change. Right? And hello, Rabbit Candy Void. Uh, we're about to get into some writing sprints or, you know, focused periods of work. I will be doing editing. And no, I don't have the timer up yet because I'm on the wrong screen because I was uh, looking at, you know, this is kind of my general main screen, uh, screen for when I'm looking at things. So, everybody ready? And let's go. Oh yeah, this is what I actually have to do some serious editing with.
See, now this is one of the cool things about uh, World Anvil. <clears throat> I've the edits I just made were made as a result of clarifying shit that I've worked on in World Anvil since I have uh, been putting my stuff on there. So. Hey DM Stretch, good to see you. We're we've got two minutes left on our focused work period slash sprint. I'm getting some editing done. Jeez, I used to be kind of overblown with my phrasing, didn't I? I think it, I thought it made me... Well, in a way, I, I'm... I was imitating the style of Master and Commander, but... How'd you guys do? I did pretty well. I'm pretty happy with that. I managed to uh, copy a new raw scene into the uh, manuscripts here, and I have basically edited two chapters. But, you know, I was giving a last cursory glance over the first one, to be fair. 323 words for Author Goddess, awesome. 214 words for Siobhan, excellent. 165 for Rabbit Candy Void, who came in right at the beginning of the sprint, so that's amazing. Just coming in and writing cold, good job. <laughs> Does the cat is writing on paper with with doodles. <laughs> Darth Nicholas says, got three books shared into a classroom without breaking it this time. Awesome. Good job, guys. That's great. All right, people are, are getting in the spirit of the thing. This is great. Ah, and I love these reminders. Uh, reminder again, that, that way. This awesome timer on the other side of the screen was made by Darth Nicholas, and he's amazing. And uh, the hydrate reminder was helpful because otherwise I forget to drink things when I'm working. And then I go, okay, it's like, five o'clock i started writing at noon i feel fucking terrible why do i feel terrible oh i haven't eaten or drunk anything in five hours eh. mm. except coffee of course so yeah it's great guys good stuff what are you all working on today i don't like this last line by the way you can see it here on the screen also burst out laughing it couldn't stop it was effervescent i know effervescent is what i want to say but the thing is i don't think it's consistent with the rest of the language because it, it's a pretty simple writing style through most of the rest of it so great uh um 
I'm looking for a better way to put it. Bubbled forth somehow. I don't know. Yeah. Siobhan says, I struggled with the scene, trying to figure out how to phrase things. Yes. Hope. Core Agenda Chronicles. Yes. Excellent. Rabbit Candy Void is working on their Alliance article, which is a good idea. I try not to do that on Wednesdays. I try to save. My compromise for this month is for nano prep, I'm going to work on this, uh, my manuscript on Wednesdays, and I'm going to work on the Alliance article on Fridays. I have done some work on the Alliance article, or not Fridays, Sundays, right? I have done some work on the Alliance article since uh, Sunday. I was doing a lot of stuff with flags yesterday that was a fucking shit show. It made me so angry. Um, but yeah. Right, so the problem was I was trying to get World Spinner to do its heraldry art. Uh, check it again today. It's got a heraldry editor, which is amazing. And I have a paid account of World Spinner, and I haven't regretted it, right? But I'm trying to get this heraldry artist thing to work, and I tried it on two different computers and two different browsers on the two different computers. Oh, it's working today. Oh, good. Okay. I complained yesterday. <laughs> I karened it. I went, you know. <laughs> so I may make some updates to my flags that I created. We'll have to see. I might just stick with the ones I got now, though, because I made them already, so screw it. I don't know. Okay. But it, it actually is an amazing heraldry editor. You go to worldspinner.com and you look at uh, tools, right? And you click on heraldry artist yeah it's it's pretty awesome but yeah i was very angry yesterday because i could not get it to work and i had to find another flag generator it was such a pain in the ass and they aren't as good uh rabbit candy void said i had one done and then i blew my world up so it makes no sense now <laughs> i hate that Siobhan says, I started my article, but I'm getting bogged down trying to figure out how to work it all out. I hear ya. I hear ya. My brain is kind of hurting now, too, deciding what uh, systems the different uh, members of the organization are in. Oh, almost time to get back to work here. Five, four, three, two, one, and we're off. So burst out. So burst. There we go. Into effervescent laughter and couldn't stop. There we go. That's better. Chandra also burst into effervescent laughter and couldn't stop. A great weight had been lifted from his shoulders. At last they were free. Okay. Happy with this. All right, down with chapter sixteen. afraid to shut that down now in case it stops working again just making sure that I that's really the word I want and I wasn't like making extensive use of a thesaurus yeah informal casual curt or brisk Without care, thought, or consideration. Yeah, okay, that'll work. It's fine.
I've been doing some study isn't accurate. Yathor does not study anything. He might look into it, but he doesn't study shit. <laughs> <clears throat> It's a redundant statement. Nah, it's still not what I want. I 
think that's a better phrase. Okay, I need to go harken back to this because I haven't established this in my world. That business comes from the fact that this was based on a role-playing game. So now I have to go back and make sure I write somewhere about the dangers of the Orcish Horde. No, no, actually, no, I'm wrong. I did that twice, okay? There was a conversation with Madrimlian and there was the, uh, when he was there aboard Madrimlian's ship, and there was the, uh, um, yeah, okay, so I've done it twice, so that's fine. to establish the spare uniform too. I'm pretty sure I've done that though, or the civvies. Let's make sure. Yep, it took a few months to change it to the civilian clothes I now customarily kept in their packs. Good, no, I already included that, so that's fine. Have to make sure to harken back to that.
Hey Greg, nice to see you. Thanks for joining. Stretch will be right back. See you soon. <laughs> Wish you were done with the day job so you could join in. Just lurking. That's cool. Glad to have your company. We got about a minute left here. How'd you guys do? I didn't get as much done in this one, obviously, because I had to harken back to an older scene and make sure that I had included the references that I needed in order to not be creating something cold out of thin air, right? Um, it's important to set things up, right? Rather than just, oh, and all of a sudden he has a broom, you know? Like, you gotta, you gotta put the broom in there first. Right, so I was just checking to make sure that I had done that. Schwann only got 213 words, which is still awesome. It's what I typically get in a 15 minute sprint when I'm like writing the draft. Something around there. Eh, it gets done. I just put in more time overall. 318 for Author Goddess, who is like kicking some ass and taking some names today. She led the last sprint too, as I recall. We have a candy voice says I was stuck making stub articles. That's where I quit last night with my uh, challenge article because I looked at it and I went, okay, I now have to do content, quick content creation for every single one of these little freaking subgroups. And I was like, oh my God, I just don't have the energy for this right now. You know what? I'm tired. I'm going to bed. Dazzle Cat says, buckle down and define non-plot magical items in the world. That's cool. Yeah, Rabbit Candy Void's agreeing with me. That's exactly where they are. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. You know, and then I'm going to feel obligated to at least make some, I mean, like, it doesn't figure in the challenge. You don't have to, right? But I'm going to feel obligated because two of the groups, okay, four of the groups that join this organization are like empires or large kingdoms and then i'm going to feel the need to make sub articles to the sub articles about those like one of them has something like uh 11 client states i'm gonna have to make articles for all of them i know it right um i'm not going to include them in my diplomacy web though i'm going to do like you know that can be a sub diplomacy web because that's too much goddamn work <laughs> also it'll be confusing um, I've already got, uh, four major powers and five independent co-belligerents because this was a pact that was involved in a war. It's basically an analog for the central powers of Europe and World War One, right? And I'm going to, uh, you know, so I, I figure that nine organizations with their interweaving, you know, diplomatic relationships is sufficient. <laughs> so... Yeah, Dazzle Cat says, if I have lists, I can corral my enthusiasm. <laughs> That's cool. Some people, lists are really important. Yeah, if, actually, uh, I saw a comment about, you know, lines and circles to get things straight in your uh, challenge article. If you're having difficulty picturing how everything is going to look, right, and how it relates, why not draw yourself a Venn diagram or, you know, an article that's going to look a lot like the diplomacy web when it's done, right? Except that um, you set up the diplomacy web on World Anvil by kind of doing it backwards, right? But you can 
just draw a picture to get it started and go, okay, so this is the big central organization, right? And here's all the sub-organizations, mind map, right? Um, so what's the relationship like? You know, these guys are these guys hostile or these guys friendly, you know, and work it that way. Right, that's how I would handle it, and um, yeah. Author oh, Goddess says, throws down a new story idea. Damn it! <laughs> yeah. All the, all the, too many ideas, so little time. I hear you. Yeah. Author Goddess is one of those people who might benefit from an notebook. Or she keeps track of ideas. Or maybe it's good that, it, you know, if she doesn't have a notebook where she keeps track of ideas, maybe it's a good thing she doesn't because otherwise she would never do anything at all but write. And I know she writes a lot anyway. So perhaps it's best. Oh, the goddess says I have a spreadsheet. <laughs> That's great. <coughs> All right, time to get back to work, which is good. Five, four, three, <coughs> and we're off. Okay, I think this is actually another scene here. Oh, look at that. It conveniently has just frickin' named it for me according to my conventions. Or did it? Oh no, I lied. I was in the wrong area. <laughs> I was like, oh, that's handy.
No, that's not correct. Where's my map? Fuck. I think I changed it, but I'm changing it back. Pretty sure I called that the Northern Sea. not the map I want.
There we go. Mostly I'm screwing around with freezing at this point. Hmm, 
I'm being redundant and contradictory. I guess I'll have to work on it later. Alright, how'd you guys do? I'm pretty happy with that. I did some seriously good editing there, I think. I'm pretty impressed. I don't have time for another sprint, do I? Holy crap, it's almost 4 o'clock already. That was a fast stream. My god. Time flies when you're having fun, all right? Wow. All right. I might do a little focused writing again before we uh, quit permanently, but we got like seven minutes, so. Wow, that just, that just blew by for me. Siobhan says, writing for now is not a thing, feeling nauseous, so going for a soak instead. Fair enough. I'm sorry to hear you're still not feeling well. Uh, Rabbit Candy Void says, I have taken a carrying around a voice recorder. I, that, that was in response to keeping track of your ideas. That's great. The uh, author goddess says that her spreadsheet has 28 workable ideas right now. Holy crap. Siobhan says, I have five, but all set in her world of core agenda. Author Goddess says, I don't even count most of my sequels. I don't either. Um, for me, generally, right? Okay, well, Weird West I do, because Weird West is kind of a sequential thing, but for Toy Soldier, it's all one story. It's just a really big story, and it's split in the parts, right? It's like Lord of the Rings. Okay. Um, probably not as brilliant, but kind of like that. Um, <clears throat> this one got eaten by the mod apparently um don't call people idiots right but um because it keeps modding anything that has the word idiot i don't know <laughs> right I'll, I'll allow it unless you're actually insulting somebody so you know whatever but it might be a minute before post author goddess says um new idea a young woman turns 18 and learns that she is the lost heir to the throne she fights her way to the capital and into the palace only to learn that she was the decoy the real heir shows up and is an idiot. The Council of Lords decides to make the first girl the queen and kill the true heir to cover it up. Now the MC must protect the true heir from those who would prefer her. That's awesome. That's awesome. I would read that book. You know I would read that book. Yeah, so that's what happened there. Sorry. Yeah. Dazzlecat says that's a cool idea too. But nice, is what Daz says. Uh, Siobhan says, so I have not shifted to Sebastian in a while in my writing because he is currently delirious with fever and a nasty infection. Eldrick has just discovered this. Um, you could take advantage of that and have him be hallucinating shit that is relevant to the plot. I don't know. You don't have to. Just saying you've got an opportunity there if you want to use it. Um, I've also stayed away from Sergei, who is currently not around, after finding out his daughter has been killed. Yeah, okay. That's kind of rough. So what's going on here? Sergei just did, uh, abandoned this kid that's in his charge because his daughter's been killed. Didn't he make other plans for the kid? How old is the kid? You know? Then again, if he's like 16, you know, you're grown up in medieval society, so maybe not. I don't know. Um, but... <laughs> Donair kebab and a bottle of 7-Up. I live such a healthy life since DM Stretch, and now I want a Donair kebab, and I hate you. Because, <laughs> oh my god, I love Donair so much. They're so good. <sighs> and I'm hungry. I wonder if they're open. <laughs> Siobhan says food sounds good and bad right now. DM Stretch says, well, I was going to cook, but I fell asleep on the sofa for about three hours or so, so eh, that'll do it. Siobhan says, uh, DM, you seem somewhat narcoleptic. Stretch says, yeah, I seem to sleep in shifts. Only got about four hours last night due to being out of work for, long, for so long since the start of the lockdown. I hear you. Uh, Jamie has been out of work since the start of the lockdown, too, and I think he's about ready to chew off his own leg. Just saying. I would really like him to, you know, find something to do. 
No, I'm kidding. Okay, Rabbit Candy Boy did 331 words. Excellent. That's great. Dazzle Cat says, still working on paper. Awesome. That's great. Siobhan says, consider bath but need food. Also, thought of food is not nice. Make up your mind. Uh, DM Start says, uh, might have been why I felt so rough the other night when I had to cancel my stream, lack of sleep, and didn't sleep during the day. You know, you do eventually have to sleep. I'm just saying. Like, it's, you, you really do actually need to do that. You know, coffee and nicotine and, uh, you know, sugar rush and whatever else you're doing will only last for so long. And eventually you still need to sleep. I'm just saying. My protagonist might want to know that too. Yeah, DM Stretch is asking, uh, what's up with Siobhan? Yeah, new meds with nausea as a side effect. That's crappy. Um, Sharon says it also blocked woman. No, it didn't exactly. It blocked idiot woman. There's a difference. Yeah. Um, yeah, not pleasant. Meds like that suck. Author Goddess says, lol, usually I only call myself an idiot. Yeah. Yeah, and then respelled idiot so that the mod thing wouldn't pick it up i'll always allow it don't worry about it unless you're like actually insulting people which you wouldn't do so uh dm stretch says you're not the only one author goddess guilty here too yep uh siobhan says plans were made eldrick is studying healing at the house of healing under the guise of ellie okay neat and lol about the kebab <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I really like them. They're good. Uh, Author Goddess says, "Bug the bug made, uh, bug the bug made, mac. What the hell, maca macaroniliatica, macaroniliatica. Okay, I don't know what that is." Dan Stretch says, "Yeah, I don't have anything keep me awake anymore. Don't smoke. Gave up drinking coke near the start of lockdown." smart also i'm one of those strange people that don't drink hot drinks uh aaron agrees with you aaron thinks that hot coffee is an abomination he likes cold coffee though ah macaroni latica okay fair enough sounds good actually sounds really good <laughs> i must be hungry um all right it's so we're four o'clock Right, so that's when my stream's supposed to end. Anyway, ah, so good. Um, let's see here. All right, so um, yeah, I was looking for something, but I don't see it. So, um, all right. Don't forget, once again, Friday. Uh, noon pacific right um directly after the world anvil tutorial stream and uh right before aaron's ask it old gm we are going to be doing a special one hour stream where we're going to reveal our plans for our nano rhymo uh, competition challenge thing that is organized by some of the members of the anvilite streaming core and uh I got a lot of work to do before then, <laughs> but it's going to be fun. Uh, Siobhan and Danny Adventures have already said that they are willing to come on stream with me. So we'll have that going on and tune in and it's going to be fun. And uh, I hope you guys will take part in the event because I think it's going to be great. Author Goddess says, beef, macaroni casserole using egg and milk instead of cream soup. Oh, okay. I make that all the time. It's delicious. Yeah. I use, like, um, you know, lactose-free milk, right? Because I can't have uh, the normal cream soups. I'd have to make the soup and then put it in there, right? And actually making mushroom soup while I do that, cream mushroom soup, because I like it, when you're gluten and lactose-free, it takes work. It's not something you can open a can for and just go, right? You can't do that, so. Black is supposed to be on, but can't see them. Oh. 
Oh, black is off the schedule now. I guess black canceled. That's unfortunate. Okay. Uh, black Megan is usually who I raid on Wednesdays. Author Goddess says, plans for world takeover? Ashvan says, yeah, he's not up at the moment. Oat milk, so good. Oat milk is pretty good in cooking. I don't like drinking it, but it's okay in cooking. Well, let's see. So who the hell is on then? Um... What does my schedule say? That's not the schedule. Got that page open twice. I should really pay more attention to stuff. Okay. I got nobody! That's no good. Actually, there's a real dearth of things going on tonight, isn't there? It's like... Three hours of nothing. Wow. Dan Cobalt Press, Scribbler Society. Okay. Siobhan says Black is having a tough time. Yeah, I know he is. Yeah, it's a shame. I sympathize. Dan Starch says I would have jumped on if I'd known. Still eating. How fast he eat? I'll wait for you. If it won't be longer than a few minutes. Um. Yeah, Scribbler Society, Dan Lair, Cobalt Press. Writer Greg's on in three hours. I know. I'm looking forward to it, but. Scribbler Society. I'm busy wrangling kids. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, check out Author Goddess's channel, by the way. Uh, she just started streaming. She does writing-related streams. She talks about, um, you know, things, you know, the same kind of stuff that I talk about, but she offers her own insight on it, which is great. Never get just one opinion on anything, right? And she also does uh, active writing on stream. Depends if this kebab stays in one piece or not. Okay, do you want me to hold out? Because I can. I can do that. We could do one more sprint if you want. Okay, will be a bit of an unplanned chaotic stream though. No problem. <clears throat> That's what a lot of my nano streams are gonna be like. It's a good thing I have a plan for like sprinting because otherwise I have no idea. Need maybe 10 minutes to sort out and set up. Okay. All right, you guys wanna do one last sprint in the meantime while we wait for DM stretch to get set up? Or would you rather, yeah. It's kind of fine with me either way. I wouldn't mind getting some more work done myself. But I don't care. I'm here for the nods. Sure, says Dazzle Cat. Okay, let's do it. Ready, steady, and we're up. As Coffee Quills likes to say. Ready, steady, go. All right. Yes, no, I was saying something redundant here.
what happened there. What's going on here? My music died. Huh. All right. Start it again. Interesting. Different music. Something weird going on with my sirenscape. I guess I'll reload it just a second. Hmm. Odd. Can you guys hear me? I hope so. You hear me fine. Can you guys hear the music? Or is it dead? Because it just went dead in my earphones. And I'm wondering, did my earphones just die? No music. Okay. Well, what the hell? Hmm. I don't want to spend the whole sprint screwing around with that, especially since we're right at the end of everything here. Freaking weird. Try reloading this. I've never had that happen before. Okay. I am confused. All right, let's try this one. Here, no help at all. Weird. Hmm. Well, let's see if it's that program or the computer audio, shall we? Let's see. It's not really appropriate for what I'm writing, but let's give it a go. I know I can use it. Let's see if it's working.
Nope, so it looks like something in my onboard audio went I don't want to deal with you anymore. So I might as well shut that off since that's not the problem. I mean, it just burped. Oh well. Whatever. Lost the driver temporarily. I'll have to reinstall or something. Or you listen to me, my clickety clack for another three minutes. All right, fair enough. Disappeared through the door behind the desk. the rest of the hanger. There we go. She dipped her quill. There's no need sometimes to one of the mistakes I, this, remember this is the first like raw draft I actually finished. And one of the mistakes I tend to make is I say things that don't need to be said. One assumes that one picked up a quill if one has a quill. So I can just say that there's a quill and dip it into an inkwell. <coughs> and that is sufficient. I don't need to say she picked up the quill, she held it in her hand, then she dipped it in the inkwell. We understand that. Heads up, set up redemptions are banned for the night after that cabal. <laughs> Fair enough. Right. All right. Yeah, let me know when you're up there, DM Stretch. Got 40 seconds left to the sprint here. That is sufficient. I think my, uh, oh, well, we'll find out if my sprint timer sound is working. I'm not sure. Well, that sounded. All right. Go back to downtime. Huh. 
I don't understand what happened there. All right, so how'd you guys do? I obviously got distracted by trying to figure out what the hell happened to my sound, but I still got some uh, important editing done, so I'm okay with that. Um, yeah, Siobhan says DM stretch most of my streams are chaotic. Yep. Kebab has beaten DM stretch. Siobhan says the only thing I plan for them is writing. Knife and fork time, says uh, Siobhan to DM stretch. I have no idea what I'll be writing. Maybe my one shot. That's cool. That's what DM stretch says. Uh, we could just talk, says Siobhan. Cool stretch will be surprised, says Daz. Siobhan wants to know if uh, shades would work on Greg's Let's Write emote. And then she says she needs to get dressed and go to the pharmacy for one of her meds. And Daz says she thought it off center, says she wasn't as happy with it. Yeah, you can test before you pick it. And then she demonstrated the cool shades thing that she did to my new raid emote and to uh, Ryder Greg's lemon hype, which is cool. Okay. Good. DM Stretch fo followed Author Goddess a few minutes ago. That's great. Heads up. Sit up Redemptions. Ban for the night after that kebab. He already said. I already pointed out that he said that. Right? Um, yeah. Daz says, lol, Stretch use that only to break up a long internal thought spiral. Raider Greg says, heard that. Stretch, uh, you don't eat the... A, a kebab spear says Dazzle Cat, uh, bad for the guts. Yeah, <laughs> scribbling and doodles says Dazzle Cat, so good stuff. Author Goddess did 359 words. Wow, awesome. Damn Stretch says live now, it's coming up soon. Screen up now. All right, so we're gonna go over and raid. DM Stretch, obviously, who kindly is doing an impromptu stream to keep us all busy until uh, Greg comes on in a couple hours. So we'll go check him out. I'll see if I can hear him through my computer because I bet you I can't and I'll have to reboot. But don't forget when you get there, the raid shout is prepare to be boarded because we are the Sables Privateers. As I've said repeatedly, I will be back on Friday at noon. Don't miss it. It's gonna be amazing. And in the meantime, keep writing guys and we will see you there. All right, and we're